So that shiny new game just came out, Throne and Liberty, and you want to know if it's worth your time, right? Well, let's take a look at the game first and first impressions. Keep in mind, this is not a full review, this is a quick look at the game. I played the game for about three hours, so I'll show some footage of the game while describing it and giving a few thoughts on it. This game is a free MMORPG, and I have almost no experience with these sorts of games. And after playing this one, I don't really have any negative things to say about it. I have a 3080 Ti, and I played on 1440p using DLSS on balanced, with settings either max or high. I also limited my FPS to 90 using River Tuner, but I did see my FPS go down to the 70s or 80s sometimes. Usually I was at the limit I set though. I had no stutters or hitches or any types of lag, so this game is already starting better than a lot of other games that I've tried. Okay, there's a whole lot of stuff to go through, so let's begin at the beginning. The game begins with a scene. The magical star of destruction was shattered into pieces and spread out all over the world. Those born with that fragment are called Starborn. The Archeum Commander Kazar wanted to use the power of the star fragments as a tool of war, so he sent the witch Calanthia to an island where a wizard was hiding the Starborn. Then there's another scene, and this one shows a wizard and witch fighting, and then your character getting hit in the crossfire. There's a lot of scenes in this game, and all of them are quite well made as well. Once it fades to white, creating your character begins. It's quite extensive, but when a game has this many customizations, I tend to just get bored. After that is the tutorial area. Here you can begin fighting enemies. I'm not used to games with controls or combat like this, it's kind of weird to me. So I press a button to initiate a strike and it'll just keep striking non-stop. You can't individually strike. It's either non-stop or none at all. Also, you need to lock onto a target before you can even attack. If you don't do that, you'll just stand there getting hit. Also, you can't melee if you're not close enough. You basically have to be directly on the enemy. And you can't use ranged weapons if you're too far either. You have to be somewhat close. I way prefer being able to control my attacks more, but I got used to this the longer that I played. Then the camera. There's two modes. One mode lets me walk with my keyboard, but the camera won't move unless I right click and hold. And the other mode I walk with my keyboard and my character will follow wherever my mouse points on the screen. You can also zoom out pretty far and zoom in so far that it's sort of like first person. You can parry but there's a cooldown on that. Sometimes I'd try to parry expecting it to happen but it didn't because it's on cooldown. The yellow vertical bar on your screen during combat I believe is your stamina. Once you go below the line in that bar you cannot parry. Also the parry doubles as a dodge but you have to be moving in a direction for that to work and you can jump too. One thing I noticed every battle was that even if I let the enemies hit me a whole bunch, my health never really dropped too low. You seem pretty OP in this game, well at least in the beginning of it as I've only played 3 hours. There's no heavy or light attacks or any nuance to the attacks, it's just attack non-stop until it's dead. Luckily there are skills though, which are those squares on the bottom of the screen. Those are all weapon skills, I'll touch more on those a little bit later. You can have several weapon loadouts that you can switch to. To begin you have a sword and you can switch to the bow. I didn't bother with the bow besides in the beginning, I just used the sword non-stop for most of the game. Then you have morphs, which is an animal that you can turn into. For running it's a wolf, flying is an eagle, and swimming it's an I think an otter. However you can change those morphs by unlocking other forms. Once another scene passes and you wake up from your nightmare, you're in a fortress, you can choose your name and then the questing begins. To speed things up I'm going to skip over all of the questing that I did as there's just too much to go over. I'll show some footage of it though. There's some quests that are specific to an area which are like side quests I guess. I focused on the main quest though. The main quests pretty much all have a cutscene at the beginning or end of them too. As for the weapons, you have gray sword, sword and shield, dagger, longbow, crossbow, staff, and wand. Some are better at range, some have better damage, some are more support weapons. They're all different. The choice is yours, but I went with maximum damage, the great sword. In the character tab, you can equip different weapons and armor that you have, either from buying them, finding them, or unlocking them. Just click on it and select equip. Then your stat points are also in your character screen on the left side. When you level up, you'll get stat points, and you can use those for strength, dexterity, wisdom, or perception. I mostly stayed pretty balanced and upgraded all of them equally. And then in the skills tab you have all of your weapon skills. There's active and passive ones. Active skills are ones with cooldowns and are mostly different weapon attacks and passive skills are always active and gives things like more damage or health. You can also upgrade your skills here by right clicking on them. I did that quite a lot. There's also skill specialization in here but I did not use that in the time that I played. The codex tab is your missions and you can collect rewards for missions once you've done them. The leveling logs tab is another area to collect free rewards from. Then there's the battle pass. There's a free and premium version of that. For completing tasks, you'll also get rewards here. The lithograph book is yet more rewards, but you have to sacrifice specific weapons and armor for those. The craft tab lets you craft a whole lot of items, all of which require specific materials that I didn't really have, so I didn't use crafting in the three hours that I played. The equipment enchanting tab is something that I use though. I upgraded both my armor and weapons there several times. You can also transfer a weapon's XP to another weapon, or transfer traits to another weapon. I didn't use either of those features yet though. There's a cooking tab 
tab 2, which you can use to craft items with various temporary buffs. I did not use cooking, but there's a lot in there. There's a whole bunch of menus, and then there's a bunch of people that you can talk to in the game that sell different things. Armor, accessories, weapons, and so on. There's some big tabs in the menus that I could not access yet, as I was too low a level, such as secret dungeons, co-op dungeons, auction house, and guilds. In 3 hours, I got to level 12, and I think guilds unlock at level 15 if I recall correctly. I'm unsure how many people are online at once with you in this world, but it's a pretty insane amount. I constantly saw people all around me. I couldn't fight anyone, but there was an arena that you could fight people at. I didn't see anyone use that though. There's also waypoints, which you can use to teleport once you've found one. Teleporting is useful, and it's free for below level, I think it said level 30. Levels above that have to pay a fee with the game's currency. As for enemies, there's a lot of them spread throughout the world, and they endlessly respawn, as some quests require killing them. There is such an ungodly amount of things to do in this game. Quests and side quests, quests for guilds, which I haven't even unlocked, dungeons, which I haven't unlocked those either, and then there's so much to upgrade and materials to get. On top of that, there's online people all around you doing the same thing, and there's so many of them too, always fighting monsters and morphing into animals. Here's a few more miscellaneous things. There's a text chat on the bottom left that you can use, and there's a voice chat too. I'm not sure if I had voice chat off, but I didn't hear anyone. You have a floating creature named Helpy that is along with you for part of your journey. Helpy doesn't stay forever though. It left after a couple hours. It's like a stitched together doll, kind of weird and speaks in another language. After that one leaves, you can get others though. The graphics are fine, I think. Nothing amazing, but nowhere near bad either. There's also crossplay between PC, Xbox, and PlayStation, which is a good to have. This really is only a quick look at the game. I think that this game is mostly good, and I really don't have too many negative things to say about it. The only things that I can think of is the combat. It's not the best, but it's serviceable. I feel like this would be a good game to play with some friends while you all level up together and get stronger. Though that's my personal opinion. Whether or not this is your type of game, I'll see you on the next one.